being in uh, Taylor Twellman, the uh, MLS lead analyst on Apple TV. He was at the Dallas Inner Miami game last night covering Messi. Good to see you again, Taylor. Let me start with the women's team. Uh, was this a matter of maybe not having that, like a cohesive roster where you had young talent, you had some older players maybe shouldn't have been playing, and you had some injuries, So, and the world's caught up a little bit here. I think it's that last point, Dan. I think that's where it is. Six years ago, I raised this topic, and I took some real criticism on it, rightfully so to a certain extent, the fact that the United States women, they are – the level that everyone wants to chase. It's completely different versus the men. We all know that. But about six years ago, I said when the footballing soccer countries not only put their resources behind the women's game, but their brains behind it, and I'm talking the technical, tactical aspects of the game, the gap's going to be closed. There have been warning signs, Dan, with the youth in our country and the youth national teams struggling to get out of groups now that generation's with the first team. Now we're seeing the best, most diverse U.S. Women's uh, World Cup ever. And so now it doesn't surprise me that the Women's World Cup now has Canada, Germany, Brazil, the United States going home. I think the U.S. women are up against it. And I'll say this for your listeners. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. I think this is a watershed moment for the U.S. women. Well, what do you mean by that? What I mean by that is they've got to really address top to bottom how to fix that. And I think it starts with the youth. Now, listen, on one level, and this is the ex-athlete in me, the Summer Olympics is just around the corner. So they can change the manager. They can potentially change the general manager. You can change what you said a little bit in the roster, getting old, get rid of some of that, bring in some younger players, the injuries, then those players come back. You can quickly fix that at the first team level. But what I'm talking about is systemically, you've got to make sure the 14s, the 16s, the 18s, the 20s, the 23s, the rest of the world's catching up to us, Dan. And if we as a country are just relying on athleticism and fitness, we could be behind the eight ball, not only in the next World Cup, but for the next eight to 12 years. I think it's a systemic issue. And I think the United States Federation behind the women's side needs to address that top to bottom. But was the mistake made with the roster and maybe, you know, keeping some of these, you know, Mount Rushmore women on the team and they shouldn't have been on the team? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Now, if you're going to have them on the team, they better be really good in dynamic and leadership. And I think there's a debate to be had there. Listen, Carly Lloyd took a lot of criticism and I defended Carly Lloyd. Dan, you know this way better than me. Many athletes leave the field get into this job, the red light comes on, they don't want to say anything, they don't really want to give their opinion because they're scared about their friendships or relationships off the field. Carly Lloyd gave her opinion. Whether I agree or disagree, that's not here. But she's the closest thing we have in the media to that group, and she wanted to bring up mentality. She wanted to bring up leadership. I got to listen to that, Dan, if I'm going to listen to anyone. And so I think there's a real good argument that they relied on reputation versus repetition and i think it may have caught up to him and it's a polarizing team oh, i didn't no doubt. i didn't realize how po i forgot how polarizing they were to a certain segment of of america and and there were there were people celebrating the us i don't remember a us team playing on a big stage in any sport where we reacted or people reacted that way like yeah good I'm glad. Go home. Why? Because that's the world we live in now, Dan. I mean, listen, I, honestly, I've never seen a red, white, and blue team rooted against as much as the U.S. women. And it's equal pay. It's diversity. It's the fact that Megan Rapino was the first athlete to back Colin Kaepernick and support him when she knelt. They, then it's the cameras all over them. They're not singing the national anthem now. They're as polarizing as any group that that may be there. Now, I, I'm of the mindset on a personal level. They're also sticking up for what they believe in. I have no issue with that. But you've got to deliver. Now, I raised a real question. I don't care if they're men or women. You are two-time defending world champion. And if you come into a stadium 
and dancing and singing, you're bringing more attention to yourself than is needed. You're already the two-time world champion. You don't need that. You didn't see the French national team come into the 22 World Cup dancing and singing on the men's side. Now, I criticize that. Now, all of a sudden, Dan, I'm called a bigot. That's just the world we live in now. And so I am very confused in the world we live in because the women that we're talking about, the Hope Solos, the Carly Lloyds, they've told me off camera and behind the scenes, we need people like you to criticize us, analyze us the way you do men. Dan, when I do that, I'm now called a bigot. <laughs> I'm now called a, a sexist. And so you're at, you're asking me, I don't know really what the answer is, but I do know this is one of the, if not the most polarizing teams in the world of sport. Make no mistake about it. Taylor Twelman, the uh, MLS lead analyst on Apple TV. He was uh, at the Dallas Inter Miami game where Messi had a couple of goals. Simplify his greatness if you can. <laughs> Uh, buddy, I can't, but I, I said this during the game, Dan, I think you'll appreciate this. But, but I, Taylor, I, I liken him to Steph Curry. It doesn't make sense. Oh, he's bigger than that. No, no, no. What Steph Curry, well, Steph Curry changed the game of basketball. He's undersized. Fair. He doesn't jump. He's not quick. He's not strong. You know exactly what's, what's coming. Yeah. Uh, I can look at Messi and go, that guy is the best player. Now I know it's against MLS competition, but still I, 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 there's something about him that he does something in a different way than anybody else who plays the sport. What is it? Yeah. Now, Dan, you say it's against MLS competition. By the way, he did this at the World Cup against the best <laughs> okay. players in the world that is six true. months ago. That's He's different. <laughs> okay. I, what, what I said in this broadcast last <laughs> night, and by the way, I slept right there for three and a half hours because I couldn't sleep anyways because of what happened last night. The truth is this. There's only four athletes that when the occasion comes, and the expectation level is there, they super they they exceed those. Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, Muhammad Ali. Steph Curry's not one of those guys. He's changed basketball, but he has failed. Lionel Messi, Dan, every single time the moment comes and you say there's no way, whether it's the World Cup when he's 35, whether it's inner Miami where he's had maybe four trainings with the team. It's unbelievable how every single time he delivers and then some, I don't know if we've ever had an athlete in this sport. Pelé was one in a million. I'd say Johan Cruyff, Diego Maradona, but they didn't do it as long as he's doing it. He's 36, Dan, and still operating at a level that very few, if any, have ever operated at. Have you ever been in a friendly against him? I've actually played in a real competition. 2007 Copa America. We played in Venezuela. We were up 1-0. 25 minutes later, we lost 4-1. <laughs> what was the scouting report on Messi back then? Do you remember? And that's the bad. I'm actually glad you asked that because that was 2007. He hadn't done. He's not seven-time Ballon d'Or winner, right? He hasn't done any of that. I, I likened him to this, and I remember, remember when Michael Vick made his introduction to college football, and I forget the defender, that the linebacker from the Florida State team that played him, but the, he compared him to a chicken on a farm, and you're running around trying to chase the chicken with the chicken with his head cut off. Lionel Messi walks. He walks more than any other player, and yet I likened him. He's 5'7", 150 pounds. He's like the water bug on top of the lake water that just bounces everywhere. And you think you got him, you got him, you try to hit him, you slap him, you can't touch him. He's easy to find. He's the easiest guy right now to see on the field and say, hey, he's number 10. He's in a pink jersey. Absolutely kick the snot out of him. And Dan, no one can. It, it, it's honestly, Dan, it's the most remarkable trait. The best ability is availability. He's never seriously been hurt. That is amazing to me. And he doesn't flop either. Uh, no. Nope. Which, nope. which I, I respect that. But I liken him to the same thing as Steph Curry. It's like when a raindrop goes down your windshield. And you have, <laughs> and, and then it just takes a hard left. And then it'll take a hard right. And then it keeps goes straight. And then it's a left. That's That would be my comparison. That Messi is like that raindrop going down your windshield. Just like Steph Curry. Some things yep. you can't explain, but that's the beauty of, of sports. 
Nope, but Messi's got two quads on him. That buddy, that raindrop has about <laughs> seventeen raindrops on each leg because you can't hey. knock him off the ball. Uh, and you you faced him when he was twenty. Yeah, I know. That's it. thanks for dating me, Dan. I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. How that would you, how would you do against him now? <laughs> 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 I'd be in the hospital after about 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> uh, great to talk to you again, Taylor. Thank you. Yep. Great seeing you, bud. Uh, Taylor Twelman, uh, MLS lead analyst on Apple TV, and uh, there to witness Messi last night.